students, welcome to Accounting 2302, Managerial Accounting. This is Dr. Mercado speaking, and in today's lecture, we are going to be covering problem 20-2, which will also be on your exam. This problem deals with break-even sales under present and proposed conditions. Like every week, I want to remind all of you to please ensure that you have read the chapter before you begin working on your assignments. Please do not fall behind. Remember that two attempts are provided on your homework and I always keep the highest grade. I encourage students to utilize both attempts that way they get the most practice out of the problems. Okay. So before we begin, let's quickly look over the problem. Now this is a long problem once again. It has quite a bit of sections that we need to complete. So let's begin. Okay. So here we have Portman Company operating at full capacity, selling a million units at a price of $188 per unit during the current year. Its income statement is as follows. Okay, So we had sales of $188 million, cost of goods sold of $100 million, giving us a gross profit of $88 million. From there, we deduct our selling and admin expenses of $28 million, leaving us with the operating income of $60 million. Okay. The division of cost between variable and fixed is as follows. The cost of goods sold, 70% of that cost is variable, 30% is fixed. My selling expenses, 75% is variable, 25% is fixed. And my administrative expensive, expenses, 50, it's a 50-50 for variable and for fixed. Now this is what management is planning. Okay, management is considering a plant expansion program for the following year that will permit an increase of 11, 11,280,000 in yearly sales. The expansion will increase fixed costs by $5 million, but it will not affect the relationship between the sales and variable costs. So what's going to impact it is the bottom line of that $5 million additional fixed cost, uh, but the, uh, the variable... Um, and sales cost will not be affected. Okay, so these are all of the requirements. We have eight requirements in this problem. Okay, and we're going to tackle one at a time. Okay. Now, before we begin with the problem, it's very important to just understand general terminology. Okay, what are variable and fixed cost? Okay, and this is coming straight out of your book. And that's why it's very important that we read. Okay, so a variable cost are costs that vary in proportion to changes in the activity base. Okay, the higher the activity, the higher the variable cost. Okay, when the activity base is units produced, direct materials and direct labor costs are normally classified as variable costs. So labor and material are variable, and though and the variability is dependent on production. The more you produce the higher your variable cost, okay? Now your fixed cost. Fixed costs are costs that remain the same in total dollar amount as the activity base changes. So it doesn't matter if you produce 10, 20, or 30, these costs are fixed. You're still gonna pay the same amount, okay? When the activity base is in units produced, many factory overhead costs, such as straight line depreciation, are classified as fixed cost. Okay, so it's very important for us to be able to distinguish between what is considered a variable cost and what is considered a fixed cost. Another major component is the contribution margin. And I am not going to go through everything that it's covered in the textbook. That is up to you to go back and review. I am just highlighting key terminology that is important and critical for when we need to apply to this specific problem we're going to be tackling in a minute. Okay, so. Contribution margin is useful because it provides insights into the profit potential of a company. The contribution margin is the excess of sales over variable costs and it's computed as follows. So the contribution margin is your sales minus your variable cost. The contribution margin is the amount of revenue that is available for covering fixed cost and earning a profit. Okay. So the contribution margin is what is left over after you've covered your variable costs and that is the money that is going to be used to cover your fixed cost and be able to determine if you're going to have a profit or a loss for the specific period. Okay. Um, and then this is, we'll go through this um, later on as we're covering the specific sections. Um, but just to start off, these are some of the base terminology that we need to be aware of. Okay. So. 
let's begin with the first requirement okay so the first requirement um, is to determine the total variable cost and the total fixed cost for the current year so we have to figure out break up these costs into variable and fixed okay we need to distinguish between them okay so let's tackle the first requirement first determine the total variable cost and the total fixed cost for the year okay so I already have a template set up here the uh, factors that we're going to take into consideration is the cost of goods sold the selling expenses and the admin expenses these are the three items down here that are distributed between variable and fixed okay so we have our cost of goods sold that's an expense that is what we spend on manufacturing the goods and then the other two expenses we have are selling and admin expenses okay so we have to uh, break out the expenses into either variable cost or fixed cost okay so let's start off with our cost of goods sold okay so for our cost of goods sold, we're going to start off with the total cost, okay? So if we look at the cost of goods sold, um, we spend $100 million in cost of goods sold, okay? So we're going to have $100 million, okay? And I'm going to multiply it by my variable cost percentage. According to the table, the cost of goods sold, 70% of its costs are variable, and that is what we're figuring out. So we're going to get the 70%. And now we're going to just simply multiply the 100 million times the 70%. And that gives me $70 million. Okay. So on the cost of goods sold, 70 million out of the 100 are variable cost. Okay. We're going to repeat the same steps for selling expenses. For selling expenses, we have $16 million in selling expenses. So we're going to put that there. My percentage of variable cost for selling expenses is 75%. Okay. So we're going to multiply the 16 million times the 75%. And that gives me 12 million. Okay. And then we're going to have the admin expenses. Admin expenses, we have $12 million of admin expenses. Um, the variable rate for admin expenses is 50%. Okay. So I'm going to multiply the 12 million times the 50% and that will give me $6 million. Okay. So my total variable cost, I'm going to add those three together, which is my cost of goods sold, my selling expenses, and my admin expenses. I'm going to add them through together. And that's going to give me my total variable cost of $88 million. Okay. That is the variable cost to produce my 1 million units of whatever is it that they're selling. They don't quite tell us here. Okay, So that is how we calculate the variable cost. Now we're going to calculate the fixed cost. Okay, Now for the fixed cost, what we're going to do is basically we're going to work backwards a little bit. What is my total cost for my cost of goods sold? And we said that the total cost for your cost of goods sold is $100 million. Okay. I'm going to subtract my variable cost, which we calculated on the top, and we calculated 70 million in variable costs. So we're going to be using the data from here down here. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. So my variable cost is 70 million. We calculated it. Okay. So that means that my fixed cost is going to be my total cost minus my variable cost. That's going to give me a fixed cost of 30 million. We're going to do the same for selling expenses. My selling expenses were 16 million. Okay. My variable cost for selling was 12 million. And we got those 12 million from up here. And then we are going to subtract the total cost minus the variable cost. And that gives me 4 million fixed costs for selling expenses. Okay. Last but not least, we've got administrative expenses. We've got 12 million in total. My variable costs for admin are 6 million. So if I subtract my 12 million minus my 6 million, that will give me 6 million. So my total fixed cost is going to be 40 million. Okay. So we've got the split now. 
I've got 88 million of variable costs, 40 million of fixed cost. Okay, that is what we have. That takes care of the first requirement. Okay. Now the second requirement, determine the unit variable cost and the unit contribution margin for the current year. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the unit variable cost and the unit contribution margin. Okay, so the unit contribution margin is explained in this section. The unit contribution margin is uh, useful for analyzing the profit potential of proposed decisions, which is what we're doing here. We have a proposal. The unit contribution margin is computed as follows. It's, the unit contribution margin is equals to your sales price per unit minus your variable cost per unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out on the second second section. Okay, so we're going to start off with our sales. Okay, how much did we generate in sales? According to the problem, we generated one hundred and eighty-eight million dollars in sales. Okay, I'm going to divide that by the number of units. According to the problem, we sold a million units. Okay. So then that's going to give me 188 million divided by a million units. That's going to give me $188 per unit. Okay. Now we have the variable cost. Look at the requirement too. Determine the unit variable cost. So this is basically requirement A right here. Okay. So requirement A for part two, we're going to have to calculate it. Okay. So now we're going to look at the variable cost. What is my variable cost? We calculated variable cost on the top section to be $88 million. Okay. So the variable cost is coming from what we calculated in part one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide that by the number of units and we have a million units. And let's see what that gives us. 88 million divided by a million. That's going to give me $88 per unit. That is my variable cost per unit. So for every unit, I have co variable costs attached to it of $88. Okay. Now, the other requirement is calculate the unit contribution margin. Okay. That is letter B over here. Okay. Letter B. Okay, so for my contribution margin, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract my sales minus your variable cost. Okay, so 188 million minus your 88 million variable cost will give you a contribution margin of 100 million. Remember, contribution margin is what you have left over after you've covered your variable um, cost or your variable expenses. Now that is that contribution margin is going to be used to cover your fixed cost. Okay. So we've got a hundred, a uh, hundred million dollars. Now we're going to calculate the, um, per unit. We're going to get the 188 minus the 88 and that will give me a hundred dollars per unit. So my contribution margin is a hundred dollars per unit. So I have $100, um, I'm selling my, my product at $188, $88 is going to my variable cost, and then I have $100 to cover all of my fixed cost, and then generate some revenue. So do I have enough to cover? That is, this is going to uh, help us identify if we need to make adjustments, okay? Now let's look at requirement number three. They're asking us to compute the break-even sales units for the current year. Okay, break-even sales in units for the current year, the year that just passed. Okay, so break-even. Okay, the break-even point is the level of operations at which a company's revenues and expenses are equal. At break-even, a company reports neither an operating income or an operating loss. Okay, so break-even is when your revenues equals your cost. You're not making any money, but you're not you're not making any money, but you're not losing any money. You know, you're just breaking even. Okay, the break-even is calculated by your fixed cost divided by your unit contribution margin. Okay, so that is what we have here. Okay, the same formula that's coming straight out of the ebook. Okay, so. 
for the current year. Requirement three is can I compute the break even for the current year. For the current year, what are my fixed costs? Well, we calculated fixed costs for the current year up here of $40 million. So my fixed cost is $40 million. Okay. And I am going to divide that by my unit contribution margin. Okay. Your unit contribution margin is right there at $100 per unit. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to divide by 100. And then that is going to give us, let me insert another cell here. Okay. That will give us one more right there. Okay. So now we can figure out, let's get our calculator. Okay. 40 million divided by a hundred. So that means that we need to break even 400,000 units. So to break even, we have to sell 400,000 units, okay? In the current condition, okay? So we are selling a million units. That's what, how much we sold this year. So in order for us to break even, cover all of our costs, we need to sell 400,000 units once we go over that amount, then that's when we start generating money. Okay, after we've met that cap of 400,000 units. Okay, so that is requirement three. Okay, requirement four. We have to compute the break even sales under the proposed program for the following year. So now we're going to take into consideration the new assumptions. Okay, the new assumptions that were made if we expand our operations. Okay, so. Under the new components, my fixed cost, my fixed costs are currently 40 million. Okay. So I'm going to get my 40 million. That is going to not change. But then the problem said that the expansion is going to increase fixed costs by $5 million. That is given to you um, in the problem. Right here. Fixed costs by $5 million. So that is where I'm getting the data. So I'm going to have my original 40 million because I'm still going to be producing the million units, but I'm going to produce additional units that are going to cost me an additional $5 million in fixed cost. Okay. That's going to be $45 million. And I'm going to divide it by my unit contribution margin and my unit contribution margin will remain the same because the problem says that it will not affect the relationship between sales and variable costs. So then we are going to divide by the $100. The contribution margin will remain the same. So then that means that, get a, let's get our calculators. Well, we've got 40 million plus 5 million. That's give me, that gives me 45 million and I'm going to divide it by 100. That's going to give me 450,000 units. So if we go on with the proposal, okay, of expansion, then in order for me to break even, I have to sell an additional 50,000 units, okay, to break even. Okay, so that we have three and four. Number five, we have to determine the amount of sales units that would be necessary under the proposed program to realize the $60 million of operating income that was earned in the current year. So let's read this again. We have to determine the amount of sales units that is necessary under the proposed program to be able to realize the $60 million of operating income that we currently earned this year. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our fixed cost. Okay. My fixed cost under the proposed program is $45 million. Remember, it's $40 million coming from the original and then $5 million being added. So my fixed cost would be $45 million. And I'm going to add my target profit. My target profit based on requirement 5 is $60 million. So we're going to put those $60 million there. And then... 
I am going to divide by my unit contribution margin and the unit contribution margin is $100 per unit. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's see what that gives us. Let me just insert one more cell. Okay. Okay, so let's get our calculator. So we have 45 million plus 60 million. That gives me 105 million divided by $100 per unit. So that means I would need to sell a million 50 units. So, determine the amount of sales in units that are necessary under the proposed program to realize the 60 million of operating income. So currently, we made 60 million dollars by selling a million dollar uh, a million units. If we go with the new proposed plan, then in order for me to make those same 60 million dollars in operating income, I am now having to sell 50,000 units extra, okay? To be able to match what I did this year. Why? Because my fixed costs are increasing incrementally by five million dollars. So we have to be able to cover those. Okay. So if, to be able to cover those, we need to sell more units. Okay. So number six, determine the maximum operating income possible with the expanded plant. So if we are to expand, what is the maximum income that we can bring in? Okay. We're going to start off to calculating our sales, okay? So, we know that if we sell a million units, we can generate sales of 188 million, okay? So, let's start off there, 188 million, okay? And then, based on the expansion, we are going to increase our sales by 11 million to 80, okay? So then let's see how much that gives us. Let's get our calculators. It's 188 million plus 11 million 280. That gives me 199 million 280. Okay. Let me put it over here. I'm um, 199 280. Okay. So that is our sales. That is how much we need to have in sales. The 188 represents what we currently are doing at a million. The 11 million 280 is what we are expecting with the expansion. Okay. Then we're going to take into account our fixed cost. Okay. Our fixed cost, remember, we already have fixed cost of 40 million. And if we add the additional 5 million for the expansion, that's going to take us up to $45 million in fixed cost. Okay. Now we're going to calculate the variable cost. Okay. Now for the variable costs, okay, we're going to have to figure out or do a little calculation on that. And let me move my cursor down to the bottom. That way we can kind of like see what I'm doing down here. I think that will fit. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's look up. Okay. So um, according to management, uh, the following year will permit an increase of an 11 million to 80 in yearly sales. Okay, so we are expecting to grow our sales by 11 million to 80. 11 million to 80. That is the growth potential in sales that we are anticipating. Now I'm going to divide that. Okay, I'm going to divide that by my sales per unit okay according when i was what i'm doing currently is for every cell that i make for every unit i am making 188 dollars that is what i'm charging so i'm going to divide the 11 million 280 by how much i'm making per unit currently which is 188 okay and we got that from our calculation here from our sales calculation right here per unit okay okay and then let me do this right here, parentheses, parentheses. And then I'm going to add the a million units that I'm already selling. Okay. So this calculation in the middle is going to give me the units that I need to sell 
for the expansion and then I'm going to add the a million units that I'm already selling right now. Okay. And let's see what that gives us. Equal sign. And let's get the calculator out. So if we are going to expand, we're going to expect to generate 11,280,000 in sales. I'm going to divide that by my sales per unit of 188. That means that we have to sell 60,000 units on top of the a million units that we are already selling. Okay. So that would give me a million 60,000 units okay, that I would need to sell. A million sixty units. Okay. Okay. So now that I have that, I can get the a million sixty units. And this is in units, this is not dollar sign. Let me remove this. Okay. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm gonna get my a million sixty units. And I am going to multiply it by my variable cost. Every unit, I'm going to pay variable cost of $88. Okay. And let's see what that gives us. Okay. So we have a million 60 units that we have to produce under this expansion plan. And my variable cost is $88 per unit. So that's going to cost me $93,280,000. Okay. okay, so those are my two, my fixed and my variable cost calculated under the expansion plan. Okay, I'm going to add those two together so we can get our total cost. So my total cost, variable and fixed, is $1,280,000, quite a bit of money. Okay. Now I can calculate my operating income. Okay. So this is your sales minus your fixed cost minus your variable cost. Gives me my operating income. So my operating income would be the $199,280,000 minus my total cost fixed and variable of 138 million 280 that will give me a 61 million operating income okay so i am going to go from having an operating income of 60 million to having an operating income of 61 million with the expansion okay So that is requirement C. Determine the maximum income you can make if you expand. The most you can make if you sell all of the units that you produce at capacity, at the new capacity level, would be $61 million. Okay? That is requirement C. Uh, six. Requirement seven. Okay? Uh, let me put that. Okay. So requirement seven says. If the proposal is accepted and sales remain at the current level, what will the operating income or loss be for the year? Okay. So assuming we go through with the expansion, all of the additional uh, fixed expenses of $5 million, and we end up not selling those units that we expanded for, you know, we don't have the demand. We don't, we are unable to sell them. So how is that going to affect our bottom line this year? Okay. So we're going to get our present operating income. Okay, My present on operating income was, looking at the numbers, my present operating income is 60 million. Okay. Then less the additional fixed cost. We had incurred an additional fixed cost of $5 million for this expansion. Um, and that will give me an operating income so it'll be that plus that that will give me an operating income of 55 million dollars so if we decide to expand our operations incur additional fixed expenses and end up not selling those additional units that we need to be able to take us to that increase in yearly sales then we are going to be losing money okay 
So how much money are we going to be losing? Well, we're going to be losing those $5 million that we spend on the additional fixed cost. Okay. Those $5 million are not negotiable. Whether you um, sell or not sell, those are fixed and you are going to incur them because you went through with the expansion of the plant to be able to have more capacity to produce more than the a million units you were already producing. Okay. So that is requirement seven. Now requirement eight is more of a critical thinking kind of a question. So that one you have to like think what would you do? Okay. And this answer can vary by student, but it says based on the data given, would you recommend accepting the proposal and explain? Okay. So would you go through with the expansion, spend an extra $5 million on fixed costs, increase, okay? Before we had to sell 400,000 units to break even. Now with the expansion, that would mean that we would have to sell 450,000 units to break even. So that means we would have to have an increased amount in sales of 50,000 units just to break even, okay? So, um, that, you know, your analysis depends on, on your thought process. But um, if in favor of the proposal um, and there's a possibility of increasing operating income from 60 to 61 million, that is the possibility. We're currently doing 60 million. We have the possibility if we were to sell all of our units to have our income increase to 61 million, generating an additional million dollars of operating income. Okay. Um, there, however, it's not that easy. The only way I would say this would really work is if you have a contract or an agreement to where these uh, additional items have already been sold and contracted. You know what? We'll produce them if you buy them from us. Okay. Um, something to consider is the break even point increases by 50,000 units. So we need to look into and consider that. You know, our break even is going to go up from 400 to 450,000 units. Okay. The sales necessary to maintain the current operating income of 60 million would be a million 50,000 units. Okay. Um, if the future sales remain at the current level, instead of having a higher net income, we're going to have a decline in income because we have that additional 5 million of fixed costs. So at this point, the company needs to determine the sales potential. Can we? sell these goods. One thing is to produce them. The other thing is, can we sell them? That is what needs to be uh, analyzed by management to see if the additional product to be produced as necessary and evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of going through with this expansion program. Okay. So uh, this particular problem covers quite a bit um, of information. It goes through the motion of calculating variable and fixed costs, calculating your variable and contribution margin per unit, calculating your uh, current break even and your proposed break even under the new uh, expansion plan. You know, it's just a lot of information being covered. All of this is to be used to be able to make that decision. Should we go through with the expansion or not? Okay, and this is where management looks at the data. And like I said, they have to figure out, do we have the clientele to sell these additional units to be able to increase our operating income? Okay. So I know it's quite a bit of information. I hope this is um, useful for you. Like I said, please, a reminder, two attempts are provided on your um, homework assignment. Please, if you are not understanding, um, you know, go back and try it again. Send me a message. There's tutoring available. Um, but do not just simply stay quiet because if you know, if you're not going to understand it, it's going to affect you the, the following chapter because this information, you know, continues to roll over. We're learning things that are going to be used in future uh, chapters. So it's very important that we are understanding the content. And to me, the foundation of understanding what we're doing is reading. Okay, reading is very important. I would um, review the PowerPoints. They have excellent um, resources, examples, key terminology embedded within the PowerPoint. Review those as well. Um, you know, and make sure that you allocate sufficient time during the week to work on all of your weekly tasks. Okay, so that is basically it for this problem. 
If you have questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out. And until next time, bye-bye.